thank you. Of course, the 2019 presidential election has come and gone with the result of the exercise announced in the early hours of today by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, where the president, Muhammad Buhari, was declared winner. And of course, getting the mandate of Nigerians to lead the country for another four years. While we await the next step to be taken by opposition parties, we are on the street of Abelkota to get reactions of Nigerians to the outcome of the exercise. I feel elated because it goes according to my consent. That is exactly where, what I voted for. I need change in this Nigeria. And the man has been shouting for change, change, change. But we masses didn't follow the change. We believe it's only elders or the government that should change. So, and the man is trying to inculcate something in my, in my brain, but we didn't follow it. And this next level, I believe God will help him to do this, the right thing. I'm not in support of Nida, PDP or APC, but it's my duty to vote and I have to just choose one person. I'm happy that he won. Uh, he's done a pretty good job. Just that we need to do something on uh, insecurity in this country. That's the aspect I think he should work on in this uh, next tenure. We are lacking many things in Nigeria here, of which we know that we have and that they have not been given to us. So for them, now there is food, many things, they are very costly, no light. Look at, before the, and is even before the election, in area I'm living, there is, we are lacking of light there. It's our president, the whole Nigerian president. We, what we need, we want everybody to do things as a, to do things as it is, to, to leave things as it be. We don't want Wahala, we don't want fright, we don't want trouble. What we want is peace to reign in the country. One hopes that solutions might be provided to some of the challenges that have been raised, particularly as it concerns security from Abelkota, the Ogo State capital, Timothy Crown. Back? Yes, we're indeed. Back. We're back, and show is on the roll. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's get talking with politicians, because they were deeply involved in this, and I'm talking about those who were in the front uh, uh, participation of, in the front line of the participation in the election. We're being joined here in our studio by the national chairman of the ANN, Mr. Emmanuel Dania. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for coming on the, on the program tonight. From our Buja studios, uh, we have uh, Mr. Frank Schwaibel. He is the spokesperson to the PDP uh, presidential candidate, uh, Atiku Abubakar. And we also have Mr. Muhammad Badi, Deputy Director General of uh, Field Operations. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Let me get the reactions, a quick one for Mr. Dania. How would you assess this election? For you, what does it look like? Uh, th that's a very good question. Um, I, I, think, I think just listening to what was going on earlier, um, what has improved in the democracy? What exactly has improved? What improvement have we seen if the numbers are dropping? If the people who are voting are dropping from the moment we got into uh, uh, the political space? Um, I think what is clear, uh, if you look at this election, is that INEC has a huge role to play in the area of voter education. That would sensitize a lot of people to get involved in voting. That is a big issue. I don't know. The amount of money that is voted out for, for, for INEC should be spent. It should spend a lot of money from the moment for four years ago to start making sure that people are educated on how the processes of, 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 of election. So a lot of people don't get involved because they don't understand and they don't know. That's one. Another thing also is what has played out in this, in this particular uh, election uh, tells us why the numbers will continue to drop. If I feel that my vote will not count, why am I coming out to vote? 
We see different videos, different shots, different things of people thumbprinting, balloting in different parts of Nigeria. This present day, 2018 and 19, we're still dealing with such a, 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 such, such, such a Nigeria. So if, if you look at it, you realize that, look, let us be very sincere with what we see today in Nigeria. The amount of um, candidates that, that came out as presidential candidates, it, it tells us that things have changed and things have shifted for Nigeria. However, how has that played out in elections that we're seeing in terms of the numbers? You find that these big parties have muscled all the various polls. If you leave a playing field that is free and fair and get the right results, then yes, we know. We're not saying that these new parties uh, are, could, could get the kind of numbers, but let's let the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? Uh, field. The field, you know, a free and fair, a fair, a fair, a fair Mr. Daniel, yes. are you frustrated by, per, well, maybe I should ask, mm -hmm. uh, are you surprised by the, out, uh, the performance of your candidates on the field? I wouldn't say I'm surprised at this because it, even those numbers are not numbers that, the expectations are quite higher. But how do, you, how, do you, how do you relate to a number like this when you know that the big parties were involved in, in Tom Britain? You know? How would you, how do you, how so do you, how do you, how do you want to reconcile that? So you could have turned out better this way? Oh, yes. I, I can tell you specific states where I believe very strongly that, you know, we have quite a large turnout of people, large followers. And I can tell you things that happen in those particular states. Which of these states, for example, do you think your candidate could have won? Philadelphia. I can give you straight off. Uh, Plateau state. You think he could have won that state? Huge votes, not won. You know, huge number of votes in Plateau state. Could he have won Airborne it? Airborne state. No. No. But you, you probably would have come out with a larger number of with votes. With larger number of votes, yes. Which other state? Ekiti state, that's where he's, he's from. Yes. Do you think you could have won it? 25% yes in Ekiti state. Really? Yes. With a sitting APC governor? Yes, 25%. So, so uh, at this point, let me um, interject and yes. say that the conversation, uh, maybe at this point, I mean, while I mean, some of the parties have already indicated that they are going to seek redress, in uh, various ways. Maybe now we should focus on what exactly it is that needs to be done to improve what the process, has absolutely. transpired at yes. this point. Uh, I, I think that may be a conversation that could bring about some level of unity amongst the various contending parties. Yeah. Uh, even while they do that, I, I don't know if you want to take that up with your guests. Yes, uh, maybe uh, I should ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mohamed Bade, who was on the field, uh, his reaction and that of his party on what has become an out, what is the outcome of this election. You heard what Mr. Dania is, uh, the challenges, and perhaps looking forward. John, I can hear you. Mr. Bade, uh, thanks uh, that you are with us. So the question is that you've heard Mr. Daniel's uh, uh, assessment of the process. Uh, looking forward and going forward, we have another election in about two weeks. Uh, what are your uh, uh, assessment or what are you thinking from the perspective of your party? Honestly, I can't hear you, Sharon. Okay, maybe we should try. Let's try. Let's try Frank. Frank Shaibu. Uh, maybe try Frank Shaibu. Maybe he can hear us while we try to sort um, uh, Mr. Badi's issue. Mr. Shaibu, can you hear us? Uh, what's your party stance on this? Of course, we heard uh, what your candidate did say earlier today. Uh, what are the plans? It wasn't specific. Is he only going to court, or is planning some other things? Well, thank you very much, Sheo. Um, fundamentally, I listened to the, the national chairman of AAN, and um, I, want to, I want to say specifically that while looking at the figures, uh, they're not just laughable, they're very laughable, and, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame we are where we are today. But going forward, I'll put it to you that the first thing that, 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 that um, draws my attention is the fact that, yes, Mr. President raised or have vested about, oh, about 9 million votes from a particular uh, demographic section of the country. And of those 9 million votes that he have vested from the, those places, he, we had, we recorded only 400,000 invalid votes from those sections. And that goes to show, you know, that something is wrong somewhere. Because 
we have states, this, a majority of these states in these sections or in this part of the country are states that are referred to as educationally disadvantaged states. Let me, look, let me take it from that perspective, quote and of quote. You know, but interestingly, these are the people who surprisingly have more voter education and less, what we call, less invalid votes. What it means is that, oh, they knew where to thumbprint the ballots, they knew where to do the right thing and all that. The question is, my dear brother, show. Yes, he had similar vote counts uh, uh, compared to what he had in 2015. Similar vote counts. And this is the same, let me use Borno as a working hypothesis. In Borno State, for instance, on the 7th of January 2019, the governor of that state, Governor Shetima, was in Asso Rock, crying, begging Mr. President, that look, you, I, we need help in Borno because of the, the state of insurgency. Suddenly, look at the massive vote turnout. Compared to 2015, almost the same thing. In Yobe, right. channels uh, television reported clearly Mr. to Shibu, Nigeria Shibu, uh, that the governor himself, Mr. Governor Gaeta, could I, not one, vote. One would want to, to one would want to at this point. Okay. No, no, one no, no, would no, no, want no, no, to please. at this point ask yeah, I think that because no, hold on, uh, no. Mr. Badi, please uh, let me just uh, make yes. this uh, point. Why the various parties? And I said this at the beginning. Why the various parties are free and are probably already pursuing the various uh, courses of action in various ways. Our focus yeah. on this segment is about what to do going forward. We've spent a great deal of time examining what has happened and probably at other fora in other places that will also happen. But going forward now, how do you, for example, improve the, the how do you, for example, improve on the process? How do you improve on the process? How do you, how do you, how do you make it possible that in two weeks' time, on March 9th or thereabouts, we don't have a repeat of this? That's one. Two, we've been trying to set, yes, how do you set an agenda? Mr. Badi, uh, maybe you'd like to weigh in at this point. Just a minute. Okay, just Thank a minute. You. I get you. I, I need to step in here. You can step need to, in. I'm sorry, on air. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm on air. He interjected just a minute, Frank. me. Frank, I'm on just air. A minute. Just a minute. Ah. Just a minute, please. I need to focus <laughs> our attention on the fact that this election that took place is a massive turnout by the Nigerian population to confirm and to support the fight against corruption in this country. That has to be made very clearly. Secondly, I want to dissuade everybody's mind from the fact that uh, there is an educate, uh, educationally backward area of this country <laughs> politically. Um, we all know the history of politics in this country, and I can refer to you to the Nepu movement in the northern Nigeria. It actually came out of Bochi State. Uh, Mala Aminu Kano himself was a student of Saadu Zunguru. Therefore, in terms of uh, 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 political consciousness, you cannot take that away from the northern part of the country if that is what the argument you want to drive. And it is the most organized political system under the uh, 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 aristocratic system that took place in that past. So let's keep that aside and forget about the fact that people are educated or not educated. The question the second is thing, the second is thing, this. No, you interjected me. The second thing, the second thing, there's a massive energy situation. There's a massive energy situation. Can you go on to agenda setting at this point? Can we go on okay, to agenda fine. setting, please? Frank, please. Okay, yes. your then we, 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 we have to focus on the main issue. If yes. we're going to focus on the main issue, on what we need to do going forward, if you look at the statistics of this election, if you look at the statistics of this election, Mr. President himself has gained more, more ground and has gained Mr. more Bade, I don't, I, in the I'm, southern I'm, part I'm of, the of, of this country. That if, if, you, right. if you continue uh, along those lines, then Mr. Shaibu will also have a right of response maybe, maybe in we that should, regard. Maybe we should Absolutely, I agree with you. But um, if, you want us to, if you want us to focus on going forward, <laughs> yes. I agree. Yeah, so please, if you agree, then I do agree that. I agree that we should focus then do on that. what needs to be done going forward. Yes. And let's forget about this. Please go on then. All right. You see, um, the fundamental thing that we need to address is the independence of the national, uh, Independent National Electoral Commission. And that has been done. And uh, to a large extent, we need to make sure that the uh, INEC itself goes out in terms of voter education, one. Two, we need to improve on uh, uh, the uh, uh, computerization of, of the electoral process itself. Uh, locally, locally, observers have shown that uh, there is a huge improvement 
in terms of the democratic process that has taken the electoral process in the country that, um, uh, that we have witnessed today. And this election is the most democratic one that has ever taken place in the country. So therefore, INEC itself, with its independence, has to move forward and ensure that it provides the integrity of its own uh, uh, results that it continues to bring out uh, to, to the populace. Secondly, in terms of cancellation of votes, in terms of timing of the election itself, in terms of logistics of the, of, of the election itself, these are issues that if they are addressed hitherto on time, then we will not have, uh, we won't be in the situation where we will be contesting most of these things that we are contesting. We knew that INEC itself had to reconfigure all the re, uh, card readers, for example. Secondly, we also know that um, taking materials to those areas is a problem. The INEC chairman himself has come out to say clearly that in terms of what we have witnessed in terms of the numbers, it is actually the collected numbers that he was actually making reference to in terms of the total number of votes that are casted, which is actually before him. He made it very clear this morning. Therefore, INEC has a lot of things to do in terms of improving the electoral process. Have we Let gone me put you on pause, Mr. Let me put you yes, on pause. Mr. Mr. Badi, let me put you on pause. We have to take a break at this point. When we return, uh, Frank, we will come to you, but please, let's take this break.